Hi guys, I'm actually posting another video this week because I had time. Yay! So this one I just want to do a quick little um, explanation or sort of tutorial. Not totally in depth of how I do my coloring for my pages um, or how I've been doing them recently. Uh, it's a lot more simple than I've done before in my previous pages and previous episodes because it just took way too much time to do it that way. So I've been trying to simplify things and I think I'm finally getting into the rhythm of how I want to do it. So that's what this is going to be about. So basically I just start off with all my flat colors. Um, very little shading unless it's like in the, the color of the face, like the cheeks, the nose, and the lips. And of course the eyes, just to give it a little bit of more shading and depth of where I want the, the shadows and stuff to fall. Then I go over every... Uh, every flat surface with a um, multiply layer with a sort of muted purplish reddish color to give it a little bit of a shadow and then I just start erasing the shadows um, of where I want the highlights to be it's a lot easier for me that way if I just start off with a whole layer of dark shadow um, not to get on with the My Hero Academia references but um then I just, you know, erase everything. I'm like, okay, the light is coming from behind him and slightly to the left of him. So that's where I want my lights to come out. So it's just easier for me to do it that way. And as soon as I start doing that, I kind of do it minimally and um, go in with the hair as well. And the hair is going to have a little bit more um, strands to it instead of just a whole flat base. And that's just because I like my, my hair that way. I guess it's more of a personal preference. Obviously, you guys don't have to do it exactly how I say. It's just my in-depth, <laughs> not in-depth <laughs> tutorial of how I do it. And of course, objects are following the similar pattern. Um, I got some cherries there. I got a little gourd slash squash thing and some watermelon looking things in the background. So just kind of going in with that and erasing all those uh, the, the shadows and highlights that I want to keep in place. And then after I do that, I just kind of go on top of another layer and do a little bit more multiply and fill in more of the shadows. Um, after I blur those edges down a little bit, kind of give it a little bit of softness to it so it's not just a hard light. Um, and then here I'm going to, I guess in a second, okay, yeah, uh, I am doing those harder shadows in those places where the... The folds of the fabric may fall more into itself or, you know, the neck area, the eyes, the nose, the other side of his face that's a little more cast in the shadow. I just go ahead and start with that stuff and just kind of give everything a little bit more three dimension to it um, because flat colors are fine and all, but that's just not what I want to keep in my comic. And I've been, like I said, in the past I've done it too much. I've tried to do like the more realistic shading and that just it got redundant and it got just it just muddles everything together makes it all weird to look at not really a comic style of doing things I've realized lately so I'm still you know cherry picking all the things hot cherry uh, cherry picking all the things that I've done in the past that I want to include now and just been kind of multiplying them all together and dividing the things and you know just just picking out what works for me and getting rid of what doesn't um, because some stuff doesn't work and then I guess on this part I'm doing a screen layer of um, some very deeply saturated colors um, I've been doing the past couple of episodes I do a, um, a reddish light where the, the Sun is coming from and then a bounce light of blue where the shadows would be and that's I've got more reasons for that than one um, you know, of course, bounce light and all that good stuff brings the character out more, but I like to do the, the red versus the blue because, you know, hot versus cold, and that's kind of how I personify Bram as he's a very a hot tempered but also mellow boy when he's uh, not raging and stuff, so that's my own personal reason for doing that. Um, and then I kind of go in with a, uh, I guess, the add layer here. And I add the highlights, add glow highlights um, on objects that have a little bit more sheen to them or things I just want to draw more attention to, like the objects, like that um, brooch that he has there. Um, 
I wanted to draw a little bit more attention to it, so I give it a little bit more detail. And of course I go on the squash gourd thing and add some highlights where I feel like the light would touch it more and have a, a natural sheen to it. And then of course I go in with the hair and I kind of do this very liberally. I've kind of overdone it in the past learning, um, but I will add some strands of highlights and um, colors that I think would pop out more just to give it a little bit more flowiness or vibrancy to the hair because I love coloring hair and I just love the way it flows and how it personifies a character in a whole different level. And then in this part I'm just adding some texture to my objects that I feel like would need texture. And I have overdone textures in the past, I'm still learning, um, so I do it very minimally and just enough to the point where you can see it's not just some kind of shiny flat object. It has some earthiness to it, it's got some texture, all that good stuff. And at this part I'm just comparing both the thumbnail sketch and the finished piece because I like to know how it started and where the idea came from and how it finished. So there. Yep, that's about it. And then I, I realized, I was like, I want some more glowiness because I love some glowiness. So I added some more um, light leaks to where he is and in the background just because. But yeah, bye! Thank you.